Hello everybody, welcome back to, now properly, the Angevines, here on Crusader Kings 3. I'm Realm Builder Guy, and uh, thank you for once again joining me in today's episode. It's, uh, what is this now, episode number 18? So, we've had a good time so far with the now Plantagenet and Angevines. And there were a few people who said... Instead of, you know, creating a, a new culture or a divergent culture, should have maybe waited until we get England and then hybridize that. In theory, um, Angevin, or the terms of Angevin or Plantagenet were, were terms that were coined as defining for this dynasty uh, later in time. And Angevin just means coming from Anjou. One of the key aspects of the Plantagenet dynasty specifically is that they were very French-focused. In fact, almost entirely French-focused. It was until, I want to say, Henry IV. Um, when Henry IV kind of moved everything more English. It may have been Henry V, but somewhere in there... That is when the English crown became more anglicized and significantly less French. It started already a little bit before that, but uh, clearly in this time period and for a few centuries after this, it was very France-focused. I mean, the, the French holdings were always of the utmost importance to the Angevines. So creating this new culture at this point in time, uh, I felt worked. Plus, I didn't want to risk passing up this opportunity to do it when you know you just never know what happens in this game of course we could just build prestige to a high level i've just seen it so many times in crusader kings 3 where i'm one step away from a massive goal and achievement and then you know the 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 ruler character dies and you're basically back to square one and i I didn't want to do that this time. I didn't want to just hold out and wait. The opportunity presented itself and I wanted to take it. So speaking of the Angevin culture, um, when we look at innovations, you know, we've got nothing going on right now. One of the innovations, I mean, we're, we've got a few things, I guess, but one of the things that, um, we need to build the duchy buildings. I mean, aside from the fact that we need the duchy of Anjou, we need burrs uh, to unlock this innovation. It's at 33% right now. Unlocks all early medieval era military buildings. So we're lagging a bit behind. We were part of the French culture, which was just lagging in this aspect. So uh, this is, burrs is gonna be the fascination that we're gonna be focusing in on. Um, as the the main drive. Now, obviously, with a low learning, that doesn't help, but we need to get this done. I mean, household soldiers would have been nice too, but, you know, we're, we're getting close. We're going to be expected to be discovered about 21 years, so it's still going to be a while. This will be 23 years now that we're focusing on it. Kind of kind of want to get through some of these before we really move forward. You know, we obviously have everything from the tribal period. If we look at the high medieval period, we have nothing here. Uh, early medieval, we have our battlements. We have mangonels. Uh, we've got the arch saddle, horseshoes, hereditary rule, royal uh, prerogative, chronicle writing, bailiffs, coinage, and manorialism. The cultural and regional, we really don't have anything here that that works. Uh, when we move into the high medieval, there are a few things here we will eventually focus in on. And I'll go into that once we get to that point. We're just not there right now. I mean, Castle Bailey's, we're really close to here, actually. 12 years expected to be discovered. Everything else is still pretty, pretty far, pretty far away. So things are, are a little, um, <laughs> let's just say, interesting right now for the Angevin. I mean, we have Folk II, the Greedy, who is, of course, the Duke of Berry. And his 
now eldest son after the death of Hugh, King Geoffrey of Aragon, who the heir to that throne is Folk Plantagenet, who is also the heir to the duchy. Uh, so Folk the Third will inherit quite an interesting realm potentially. So we've got a new stewardship perk here. Uh, we can go with detailed ledgers, uh, fearful troops, and golden aplomb. Uh, monthly income per stress level plus ten percent. Yeah, we'll just we'll just do that right now. Let's actually look here real quick. Uh, how are we looking for county control? We need to bump it up here in Barry for sure. Uh, here we are disrupting schemes. Let's actually look at finding secrets with our new spy master in Ile de France. See what could possibly be found there. And our steward, his main focus moving forward is going to be promoting our new culture. Let's take a look at some of the positions. Need to fill a few more of these. Antiquarian, we've really got nobody there that would work for that. Caravan Master. Let's see, we've got a Cowardly Antagonist. We've got a Content Paragon and a Rational Zealot. We're going to go with the Content Paragon here. Appoint him. Uh, court Tutor, is there anybody there? We've got a few people that are average at it. Um, I'd like someone who's good in learning. I mean, it could be Folk, our son. There's really nobody there that I'm overly impressed with. Master of the Hunt. We have an excellent Count Raoul, our steward, vassal, and knight. He would be excellent. Or Savary de Levis. Or Count Hugh the Peaceful of Troyes. Yes, we will take Count Hugh because now he also likes us a little bit more. Bodyguard-wise, looks like we've got a lot of average people at this. Uh, but Savary de Levis, he's an acclaimed knight. So we will appoint him as a bodyguard. Because I feel like uh, probably wouldn't hurt to have one. As far as personal champion goes, yeah, I mean, a lot of average people here. So I'm not worried about that. And that is really where it ends now. We've got a range of betrothal. Uh, to the Serene Folk, I propose a betrothal between my son Bernard d'Armagnac and your granddaughter Marguerite Plantagenet. Hmm, congenital traits spindly. Um, what do we have here? Do we have an alliance? With them, I mean, <laughs> with Duke Bernard the Smelly, we do. Mm, if we decline it, no, I'm going to decline it. We don't need it right now. So we can claim uh, Morovia, the Duchy of Toulouse. We can gain a claim of Toulouse from Duke Guichard. Getting personal here in our recent communication, Pope Victor of the papacy expressed a want to focus on his ambitions and interests more. I could make sure that our coming letters contain more um, on a topic close to his heart. I have heard that he appreciates feats of war. All right, we'll do that. Ooh, a claim on Toulouse. It's an ally of ours. Hmm, he loses 50 opinion. Duke Guichard. Um, not quite sure if I want to do that. Uh, we, the worthy successor. Uh, getting personal in his response. Pope Victor encouraged my slight dip into more personal topics. Now I just have to keep pretending that I know anything about warfare. Uh, so what about swords, huh? All right, let's see. Is there a successor? No. Not at this time. So I think we're still seeking that. Let's actually look at our knights and see where we sit here. Attempted murder while performing his duties. Uh, Duke Guillaume of Upper Burgundy. He was the man behind a failed murder attempt against Count Renault. Interesting. Interesting. I'm trying to see if there's anybody here specifically 
That would be good. Oh, uh, Count Ebert. He could become one of our knights. In his latest response, Pope Victor confesses that he actually knows nothing about the topic of and merely pretended for the sake of our conversation. What a liar, but I won't tell him. Don't worry. So that increases his opinion of us. Uh, who else could be a knight? The worthy Gosselin de Jeanville may be appointed as the Death of Demons successor. Okay. Well, where was our son? I saw him here. Count Hugh Fulk. There, our player heir. We're going to forbid him from being a knight. We already lost one son to war. We're not going to lose another. So we'll allow Count Renaud of Saumur. Other than that, I think we're good. The phys physician, yeah, we'll forbid him at this point. Now we'll look at the successor, Gosselin. Perfect. I mean, he's actually really, really good. So I think we can now also expand our military a little bit more. We're going to increase the size of our light horsemen. And I think also our pikemen we're going to push up. Now this is going to cost bit of coin but we've got plenty in the bank so that we can build up our military just that little bit more right, we're gonna search for a caravan master we'll start that search mm, I could extort my subjects for money um, take gold from someone in your realm I don't really want to do that right now there's there's no need we've got plenty of money so there's, there's no real need to do that right now. Caravan Master, as per my request, my servants have assembled two options for me. Consider the role for a Caravan Master. Gaucher is said to be more experienced of the two, but Elier is, of course, cheaper. Gaucher is a fine choice, 130 gold. Um, Elier will do. Let's take a look at there. Gaucher, he is a traveler. He is, I mean, he's a traveler, so he's got that. Elier is also a traveler. He's actually, I'm going to say he's better overall because he could also be somebody interesting for Spy Master if things turn that way. So Elier will do. I'm going to look at uh, our main castle in Angers. We can upgrade that to a keep. So that gives us a, uh, what do we have here? Siege equipment is stationed here. So men at arms damage goes up. Fort level goes up. Station siege weapon effectiveness plus 10%. Holder of this holding gains more prestige and renown. More garrison, more levies. Danger drops. Defender advantage goes up. Fort level plus four. So yes, we're going to spend 500 here. And we're going to turn the Angers castle holding from a moat to a uh, to a keep I mean it's good it's gonna take a while but uh, we're gonna we're gonna start that process see what else we can do in tour if there are things we can do here uh, the crop fields we could upgrade them so that reduces the cost of the feast of the holding minus 10 percent holding taxes go up by one percent Mm, not sure if I want to go quite there. Construct a new building here. Exercise in mediation. When the raised voices reach me yet again, I quench my instinct to turn on my heel. The constant bickering of my vassals, Count Hugh and Countess Eloise, is enough to drive any man mad. Something must be done. I could either treat the situation as an exercise in mediation, or eavesdrop and approach one of them with my sympathies. I think mediation works. Try to make uh, them see sense. Okay. Ugh, Eloise is such a pump pot. And can you believe Hugh? Um, Hugh kind of likes us a little bit. Um, Countess Eloise of Montague or Count Hugh the Peaceful of Troyes. He's always been rather problematic. Let's try to make them see sense. Yes, and it worked. Excellent. 
So I think adding blacksmiths here might not be a bad option into Rennes. Let me construct this. I do like trade port. Don't get me wrong. Uh, the blacksmith, though, gives station men at arms damage plus 10%. So our pikemen would gain a plus 10%. But trade port would increase more and it gives us more development growth. So I think we're actually going to construct a trade port here. Now in Blois, we have here, we've got earth ramparts. We could... Can we bump that up yet? No. Blois has a keep building or it's upgrade. So we don't have a keep yet in Blois. And I'm not going to go quite that expensive yet. Here we've got a station regiment of light horse. So of course, that's very nice because cavalry damage and pursuit damage gets increased. We could bump that up to dedicated manure shovels. That bumps that all up a little bit more. And yes, I think we will do that. Army movement speed goes up, travel speed goes up. So we're going to upgrade that. And I think that's what we're going to do internally. If we look at decisions, is there anything key here? No. Activities. So we could do a grand tour, and that'll really knock down how much money we have. Don't necessarily want to do that, but a hunt. I think a hunt would be very, very good because Folk is a hunter. He enjoys hunting, and he's it's been a little bit stressful, so let's see here. Oh, gonna get four. The hustle and bustle is palpable among the traveling merchant stalls. As Duchess Margarita and I walk by one of the merchants, peddling jewelry, she hesitates slightly as she leans in for a closer look. Perhaps one of these would brighten the day for my darling wife. A torque fit for Margarita. Kane's bejeweled for ten years. Nah, her company is good enough. <laughs> I mean, he's not a cheapskate, but still. So in Blois, we have a hunter's lodge, which is nice. We have found an unbeliever in Mare Edouard of Rossi. Okay. Anyway, we've got a hunter's lodge here. So that's nice. In Vendome. Don't have anything there. Hide and peek. What in the world was my daughter Isabelle doing in that wardrobe in the servants' quarters? Playing hide and seek, she claims. She looks like a ghost, shaking eyes wide open, staring at walls. Oh no. I know what happened. She must have seen two of the scalders, um, plucking a duck together. <laughs> the poor girl looks shocked. I would not be surprised if she will find intimacy difficult when she grows up. Not being more intimate than necessary will serve her well. Uh, don't be scared, girl. When you're an adult, you'll understand. What is he? He is humble and gluttonous. I mean, more, more humble, he'll say. You know, let's just chill. <laughs> don't, don't, don't worry about it a little bit. So I think Blois would be the perfect place to host a hunt. So we are going to do a hunt. So let's plan the hunt. We're going to do a hunt, not falconry. Tired of that. Mm, where could we? Hmm. Forest, no holding, high development. Where else could we do it? We could do it all the way over here in Ludan. No, we're going to do it right here in Contre. I think that is perfect. Uh, medium chance of danger. One location. So, high danger is none. Low chance. There's one medium. So, do we want mercenary guards? Or hire someone else? We can afford some some guards. Might as well. That drops it from medium down to that. We've got five in our entourage. Intent is recreation. Mm, I want to actually... You just want a good hunt and to be the one who brings down the quarry. Confirm. I want to slay the beast. We can manage the guests. Ah, the king of France, of course, of course. King Philippe of France. Excellent.
Yes, I think I think that works. We will what else could we have? Uh search parties. We can increase it to flushing gangs. Or a reasonable party. We bump that up to substantial. Much more prestige on completion. All courtiers and guests join. So we're going to bump up the party size. We are going to have a proper party. Captain Aliba has been recruited to travel entourage. I can't wait to get this started. As we wait the arrival of the rest of the guests, my servants can get started on the preparations. The gamekeepers check the woodlands each day for signs of quarry while establishing a camp closer to the hunting grounds. I have checked my gear and horse many times. It won't be long now. Soon. And the success chance is just under 40%, so not great. Count Hugh, your master of the hunt, summons the party to gather as the light reaches the camp in the woodlands near Contré. The local gamekeepers have scoured the vicinity of recent tracks and fumes. They is clearly a stout boar there. That's a typo. There is clearly a stout boar in the area. Dangerous but worthy game. Hugh grins. This ought to be good fun. Success chance sixty percent. Let's get out there. I want to hunt something with vim. I'd rather flush out a fox. I want to. I came to hunt stag. Oh, I'm humble. Let's get out there. Get it done. My steward, Raoul, is, is crouched down on the ground, humming cheerfully, picking orchids. Conan, my acquaintance, peers over his shoulder, listening intently. Duke, what a bounty of nature. Look at these plants. Truly, the wealth of the earth knows no bounds. We do not appreciate these simple treasures enough. Get back on your horses. Fascinating was that flower. I'm a hunter. I want to get hunting. Uh, get back on your horses, guys. Come on. I'm here to hunt. My party and I stalk through a copse, eyes peeled for any sign of a boar. From the canopy above, a soft twittering spills forth, growing louder as we advance. It is a nestling screeching for its mother. An agile huntsman brings down a fluffy aeus, an unfledged raptor chick, from the poplar. What luck! Only young birds caught in the wild can be properly trained to hunt. Have it taken back for my, to my muse. My vassal Count Hugh is the first to spot its sharpened tusks. The powerful boar is hard to distinguish, but there's no doubt it's there, observing us through the leafy bushes. It locks eyes with me and, almost as though the animal senses my intent, suddenly takes off in a flash of brown fur. After it, we ride. Increased hunter trade experience. Ah, after hours of riding, we are finally cornering the wily beast. Our chase has not been in vain. The exhausted, panicked animal has turned to bay, struggling to stand and squealing in panic. The proud boar squeals terribly. Sharpened tusks ready to cleave in twain any who approach, as it is surrounded by sheepish hounds and huntsmen. I will bring it down myself. Greatly increases hunter trade experience. Complete, you slay beast intent. You lose stress big time. 56% uh, chance that it is slain. 28% but wounds you. Okay. 14% chance it kills you. Spears ready and forward. No, I'm ambitious. I shall do it. Oh. Boy. Robert Baratheon. Robert Baratheon's fate. Okay, Duke Folk II of Barry rests in the arms of the Lord at 52 years of age. He was gored on a boar's tusks. A conscientious man, he was renowned for his excellent skills as a steward and a ruler. Duke Folk ascends to the throne, a formidable duelist. Many expect him to excel in tournaments and personal combat alike. And Duke Thur, Duke... Folk the third at 24 comes to the throne after a 28 year reign of Duke Folk the second who dies in at a hunt. Wow. This, this game never ceases to throw plot twists, but this series Definitely has a lot of plot twists in it. I'm, I'm saddened. I've always said that Duke, Duke Folk II, the greedy, 
was kind of average, but he wasn't. You know, he he was average for a long time, but he really grew, uh, and he grew on me. But now we have someone new, Fulk the Third, victim of the wild. I have just been informed that Duke Fulk is dead. It seems he was gored on a boar's tusk while hunting. As the new Duke of Barry, there is much to organize in the wake of this unforeseen turn of events. It is a dangerous pastime. I want this beast's head on my wall. You will become the owner of Duke Slayer. Well, okay, that's kind of cool. <laughs> okay, we gotta we gotta hit pause now because there is a lot, a lot to get to here. Wow. Um I didn't see that coming in the slightest. We have a ton of stuff to get to here at the top. Uh, we're going to get rid of all of these uh, and just focus on these up here. But let's take a look at the new one. Now, of course, because there were no other heirs, the realm did not split. It did not, but we have to take a look now at Folk, who has no claims. So obviously all the claims we worked on previously here and in Aquitaine are all gone. They are all completely gone. And I didn't decide to ask for the claim on Toulouse at the time. And that may have been a mistake because that would have been a press claim. Be that as it may, Duke Folk III is now the Duke of Berry, Poitiers, and Champagne. And he is he has the Count of Touraine, Vendôme, Anjou, and Blois. The domain holdings are back down to four. He's got a very strong military. He's, the renown isn't bad. He's got, uh, you know, piety's okay. It's growing. Prestige is growing, and the income is there, but it's not as high as it was before. If we look at Duke Fulk directly, he is ambitious, much like his father and his great-grandfather. He is arbitrary, just like his great-grandfather. So Duke Fulk III is the same, is very similar here to his great-grandfather. So very, very interesting. He is greedy. He is an astute intellectual, so that boosts his learning. His learning is really high at 15. Uh, he is an aspiring blade master, so disease resistance gets a small boost, so he he has fine health. And he's a crusader. He's a warrior of the faith. Uh, he has done his Christian duty, participated in a crusade. He was part of that uh, Iberian crusade. So, yes, he is married to Duchess Brigida of Barry, of House Armagnac, who is pregnant. She's a comfort eater. She's a profligate. So, you know, compulsive spending. An insightful thinker, trusting, fickle, and also ambitious. Now, he has two children. He has Mathilde, his three-year-old daughter. And he has Henri Plantagenet, his one-year-old son. So there, there is an heir. Sibling-wise, he, of course, he has his sister, Isabel Plantagenet, where we can still look for a spouse. Then Constance Plantagenet, who is betrothed to Duke Guichard of Toulouse. And then King Geoffroy of Aragon. And... Folk is the primary and only heir of that title. So, Folk the Third ascends to the throne. Wow. Uh, view all characters you have killed if you want to reminisce. So, Nizar Aminid, he killed him uh, in 1138, so just the previous year. Uh, so, that was, that, was the, that was the big one that he killed. So if we look at the inventory here, what do we have? Do we have anything? Um, right now, everything is pretty much fine. <laughs> um, we're, we're good to go. There, he's liked by his children. He's liked by his siblings. His mother, of course, Margarita de Limoges. 
and his wife, Duchess Brigida, loves him very much. And he also has a very good relationship with King Philippe of France. So that's very, very positive there. Now, if we look at uh, other relationships, so friends with Margarita, his mother, suffrage and bishop Paul de Carcassonne, and Duchess Brigida of Berry. Uh, courtiers. Let's see if there's anybody that stands out that doesn't like him a lot. Uh, Guillaume. And there's really nobody super important there. I'm not overly worried there. Vassals. Now, the vassal opinions are overall not great. Uh, and the other thing, he only has one alliance, and that was with Bernard II, the Smelly of Armagnac. So we need to start working on some alliances as well. So we also need to pick a, a lifestyle for him. So if we look at it, he is definitely a an, an intellectual. He's a blade master. He's got great prowess. He won't be leading armies, but he would fight in tournaments. But he is definitely going down the learning path. And uh, medicine-focused scholarship or theology. He's an uh, intellectual, so we're going to go with a scholarship focus here and select that. That gives us a plus three learning and development growth of plus 15% and learning experience of 32 per month. Uh, medicine focus gives you a health boost, slight boost to learning and theology gives you some piety and learning, but we're not really a pious dynasty. Uh, House Plantagenet. So he's the head of the House of Plantagenet and the Anjou dynasty. And then if we look at the Angevin, he is also the culture head of the Angevin dynasty. Now, the other thing is we are bumping up uh, the rate at which we, you know, learn these cultural fascinations as well because higher learning. So uh, having more learning, always a good thing to have. And we have open council. We've got available dynasty legacy. We'll do that in a minute. Dangerous faction. So we've got uh, once lower crown authority, a liberty faction here. Count Robert II of Chartres, Count Eloise of Montaigu. So we will see if we know we cannot. King Philippe is traveling. I wanted to petition him. We have to wait for him to come back before we can do that. Let's look at our council. So Duchess Brigida. Mm, I mean, she's not overly great at much of anything. Patronage, court politics. Could use a little bit of help there. Our bishop, religious relations. We need a new chancellor. So here, Countess Emicind or Countess Elmengard, who is terrified. Uh, the one-legged Emicind. Uh, we will assign her, and she will work on foreign affairs. Our steward will be Count Renan of Samour. He is traveling. Or Count Raoul. Raoul is a powerful vassal. Let's actually take a look at the vassals here. Raoul, he's a powerful one. So we are... Hmm. Do we go with him? Or Renan, no Raoul. Uh, is he good at anything else? He could be a good spy master, but we have a very good spy master. So Raoul, you will be our steward, and we want you to promote our culture. Uh, is he already doing it? He's already working on it down here, so we'll just focus on that. Keep that going. Now we need a new marshal, Count Angelbert of Provence. There's no truly powerful one here. Count Gospert of Lusignan wouldn't be a bad one. Uh, and he's a strategist, so we will assign him. And county control, we're still working on that. And Barry, yes. So we are good here, Lieges Council. Uh, I doubt he's going to pick us as a steward, because that's not really what we are good at. And then a new dynasty legacy. So we've got customs, tolerance, curiosity, and so on. So we can unblock language scholars. 
So minority vassal opinion plus 10. Learn language scheme power plus 20%. He's an intellectual. So this could be something he focuses on. Activities. Walking the sacred path. Pilgrim trade experience. Traveler trade experience goes up. Warfare. He's not a warrior. He is not a warrior. Now law could be interesting. Mostly fair popular opinion plus 5. Hunt and feast costs go down. I mean, this is actually a nice one. Um, the customs, I don't know. Guile, that's not his thing. Blood, noble veins. Uh, so plus 30% of inheriting good congenital traits or chance of new good congenital traits. Erudition, so a vibrant court. Courtier and guest opinion plus 10. Court grandeur gets a boost. Guest recruitment costs go down. Glory, respect, and loyalty with which others want to be associated. Renowned name, monthly prestige goes up, number of knights, mercenary, higher cost, or kin, large skilled families. Uh, bounteous loins, fertility bumps up. Hmm, this is an interesting one. Going down law could be an interesting uh, possibility here for him. Uh, or uh, customs. This is, of course, something for someone like him who likes, who is mm, scholarly, languages, or activities. I don't know about this one. I think law. Law would be the way for someone who is um, more let's say, uh, education-focused or an astute intellectual, I think going down the path of law is more what he would choose. Again, this isn't necessarily the most optimal thing to do, but uh, it it's definitely fits his character. Now we can renegotiate the alliance with our brother, who will accept that, and alliance with Count Geoffroy, a Poitier, our uncle, a rational villain, he will not accept. Okay, he, um, there's nothing really there that ticks any of the boss boxes. And main thing is he just doesn't really like us. And he, you know, he's fickle. Is he fickle? Yes. And difference in military strength helps. He is a claimant. That's the thing. He is a claimant on the throne. So Uncle Joff Jeff Geoffroy. Uncle Joffrey will be one to definitely keep an eye on. So let's take a look. Uh, inherit. So Aragon. And everything that comes with it. That is the main thing. I think we're also going to look at our youngest sister and find a spouse where we gain some good alliance power. So Kingdom of Poland, the Duchy of K Crane, the Kingdom of Castile, a one-year-old, really? She's 13. Uh, Venice, no. A Kingdom of Lotharingia, the Isles, not really. Silesia, I mean... There's nobody near her age. That would be the nice thing is. Duchy of Österjotland. Principality of uh, Poes. Duchy of West Franconia. Dietmarwelf. Duchy of Lombardy. Kingdom of Galicia. The King Ramiro Bermudas of Galicia. That might not be a bad one. Prince of Hungary. There's a claim on the Kingdom of Hungary. He's the Duchy of Steiermark. That's not a bad one, but Galicia or Burgundy. And there are a few here that are kind of nice. The Mercians, no. The Great Company. Duchy of Nautmark, no. I think marrying into... Let's go back up here. Let's see, what is he? He is impatient, he is callous, and he is lazy. It's not exactly a great guy. Um, she's bossy, chaste, humble, and trusting. He is compassionate, honest, and humble. 
You know, we're not gonna do do our sister dirty here. I think a marriage alliance, even though, uh, what is he? He is arbitrary and ambitious, so he wouldn't care. So King Ramiro it is. We are going to then have an alliance, I'm assuming not matrilineal, no. <laughs> Send that proposal to the Kingdom of Galicia. We obviously do not care. We look at our own children, three-year-old Matilde. Is there anybody that we could find that would be a good betrothal? Hmm, Infante Nuno of Castile, Prince of Poland might not be a bad one. Uh, but Poland's pretty far away. Castile is a lot closer. Lotharingia. Then, of course, there is the Kingdom of Hungary itself, Duchy of Ustajotland, West Franconia, Lombardy, Galray. We already have that one. The Duchy of Burgundy. Hmm, I do like that. And Loup de Bourgogne. He is two, and he is quick. Get an alliance there. Can we do this matrilineal? They will accept this one as a matrilineal marriage. So children will be born into House Plantagenet. I like that. And the congenital trait of quick comes with it. Excellent. We will send that proposal as well. And so the alliance game has moved up. Uh, we've inherited a lot of money. A lot of projects going on. Anything else here? Are there any hooks we have? We hold none. All right, it's time to unpause and get going. So there is the alliance formed with Burgundy. Excellent. And the Kingdom of Galicia. And the Kingdom of Aragon. Very, very nice. I'm particularly happy about that matrilineal match with Burgundy because then uh, there will be some more strong children born into our line so petition our liege um we will petition him choose petition type dismantle faction i want to petition him to dismantle that and we've got a caravan master no danger here so we will start traveling i can't wait for a fresh start heading to the ile de france and our wife, Duchess Brigida, is the head of the Regency. Weird whispers. I've noticed that Guillaume avoids me more than usual. He always sits at the opposite end of the table whenever we're invited to a feast, and consistently refuses my company while camping. We may not have the best relationships, but, whoops, but that attitude is starting to tire me. Especially... When I overhear him defaming me, Fulk is a brash bastard. I'd be way better duke than him. You want to know how it is? I'll show you. So, uh, you win the fight against Guillaume and make him leave. So, he is the court physician. An honorable lackey. Really? So, he gains the trait wounded, gains mutiny humiliation. He leaves the travel entourage and the court. Caravan master, eh, take care of it. Uh, so she scolds Guillaume. No, he's arbitrary. Screw you. That's, that's what happens there. So now we need to find it. We need to get a new physician. Is there anybody at our court that would be good at this? No, of course not. So let's go in search for a physician. Gain 200 Diplomacy Lifestyle Experience. That's not nice. court, court Physician, so we got to deal with this first. Amadea is widely known in scholarly circles. Aha. Um, this world is full of dangers, even to a duke in his court. As per my request, my servants have inquired after recommendations, and now they have assembled a few options to choose from. Amadea de Bove. He'd be 95, cost. He is an herbalist and a physician. Yes, Amide will be the man. So, I am escorted into King Philippe's throne room, where he beckons for me to approach and address him. 
I summarize the events which have led to the open treachery of Count Robert and his Liberty faction, and request their forced surrender by the king. After listening to the speech, he sits in silence for several moments as he mulls my petition over, eventually addresses me. You make some good arguments, but if I am to agree to your request, I will need something in return. Surely you see it would benefit both of us if we come to an arrangement. My king, perhaps I explained it poorly, spends 75 prestige to continue to try to convince him. Let's try this. King Philippe thinks for a moment, then cries, Beranger, I require your counsel on this matter. The nobly born food taster steps forward, eagerly clutching his robe. Yes, a most delicate affair, my lord. Duke Renan, the king's steward, watches quietly from the sidelines. The right numbers would persuade him of my need. The king turns back to me, his attention already moving elsewhere. I need to do something. I know just the thing to trip Beranger up. 66% mm, chance that he's unconvinced. Renan, uh, the logic here must be clear to you. King Philippe is unconvinced. Ah. Our regent has swung the scales against power against us. Well, that's a that's unfortunate. Uh, betrothed can marry. We can do that here in a minute. Uh, tip the host. The afternoon is quickly advancing into nightfall as we enter the local farm estates of Versailles. The estate owner Aubrey greets us warmly and promises to host a lavish feast for us. Once the feast starts, we dine on a veritable menagerie of roast animals, stews, soups, bread, and the like. In the morning, Aubrey approaches me as I enjoy my breakfast. My lord, hosting such an extravagant shindy as yesterday can be expensive. You should pay me for the prestige I brought to your farm. Uh, I mean, I'm greedy and arbitrary and ambitious. King Philippe of France grows closer to forming a rivalry with you. Oh, this is against the king. Let me compensate you. Pays 95 gold to King Philippe. Gains stress. And he gains 20 opinion of you for 10 years. So he is ambitious. This goes against what he wants. But it's to get on the good side of the king as an ambitious man. That is what we'll have to be. And we're overwhelmed by stress. Mental break. Too busy. By God, petitioners from the realm have been queuing up lately. This work feels endless. Yet another one steps forward, evidently a distressed merchant of some kind. Do you have any taxes for me? No? Then I don't care much. Merchant gops at me, blinking rapidly in shock. Was it something I said? Maybe a new cloak would make me feel better. So become a profligate like my wife. Drink, this is too much of a, for, for a sober mind. Uh, has he become a drunkard? I am the Duke. I can do this. Hmm. No, he's... He's... He's greedy. So he wouldn't go spending money. He's arbitrary. He's ambitious. No, he's just going to force himself through this. Alright, now we're going to go to the betrothed. You can marry... Duke Guichard of Toulouse. Notable guest has arrived with a claim on the county of Anheim. Don't really care about that. Uh, greetings, my implacable vassal. You have been a loyal, devoted subject, and I wish to reward you for your service. In recognition of this, I am hereby offering the position of steward of France. Okay, well, I am sorry, France, but accepting the same role that the family has always had. And we will send that proposal... And now we have an alliance with Guichard of Toulouse as well. And now, back home, finally, thank God, I can go inside again. Espionage cannibalism while performing his duties as my spymaster, Giraud, has uncovered the secret held by the Duke René de Flanders that he is... He needs human flesh. We, we, kind, of, we kind of already knew that. All right, let's uh, hit pause here real quick. Count Guitar's Grand Tournament. Ooh, in three days. Heading to a tournament now. 
He is an aspiring blade master with some good prowess. He likes he likes tournaments, so we will join a grand tournament for sure. Okay, we've got some danger here, so we are going to hire mercenary guards. And uh, the second one, is there anything here? We don't really need captains. Hire a forder, wetlands, floodplains. Forest guide, a cultural ambassador. We don't really need that. Mm, circumspect modifier for your travel. No, we're just gonna we're gonna do that, and we will go. All right, so barely back, already heading down south all the way. I mean, look how far it's going all the way down here to Montpellier. That's uh that is a long trip for the new Duke Folk the the third. He's used to saying the second of Barry. Uh, but now he's got some good alliances: Aragon, Burgundy, Galicia, Galicia, Armagnac, and Toulouse. So he is in a very strong position. But King Philippe, ah, there's just unfortunately. Nothing there. Claim liege title. Mm-hmm. Yeah, not not quite yet. Maybe one day. Other than that, there's not much. Can we modify our vassal contract? I wonder. Can we drop that? No. No, we can't. Just kind of messing around, seeing what's there. We need a hook on him, and we just don't have that. Speaking of which, let's go to Hooks and Secrets. Yeah, we're definitely going to blackmail the Cannibal of Flanders. No doubt there. And we'll look at our council. We don't have a great relationship with our Spy Master, so... I send a gift of 50. No, I'm greedy. I wouldn't do that. Instead, we are just going to try to sway him. And that 95% chance of success. So that's very, very good. All right, I think this is a good and interesting place to end today's episodes. Uh, episode, just one. Feels like two. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe if you're new, and let me know your thoughts now after Duke Folk II, who really was, like Duke Folk I, a big realm builder, and not only founded the Plantagenet House, but also the Angevin culture he has passed on in ways of robert baratheon and a boar and now his son the astute intellectual blade master folk the third has taken over who could one day ostensibly also become the king of aragon so let me know your thoughts down in the comments below i am realm builder guy and i will speak to you soon take care bye